team. They had the bulk of their World Cup winning squad still with them. The team includes the likes of Kylian Mbappe and Gola Kante, who are really um, are an exciting uh, bunch of players. Karim Benzema is back. So um, I think France are the team that I'm looking forward to watching. But there's some very strong teams in this in this Euro 2020. So I think it's going to be an exciting tournament. Yeah. Belgium is one of the most talented squads in the world. They had an amazing run to uh, these championships. Uh, you look at your squad, they have selected five defenders, which suggests that uh, their intentions are to attack. And can this golden generation deliver some silverware? You know, it's been so disappointing so far for this go this golden generation, as they call this um, this uh, Belgian squad. And there's some some amazing names in that team, and they've come so close so often, but they've never quite delivered. I'm not so sure that they're going to deliver now. Um, I think they can get um, reasonably high in. Uh, re they can go reasonably far in the tournament. They are the number one ranked FIFA side. So sure they've got it to go all the way. Yeah. One of the burning issues that are bound to be brought to life is that is that of racism. Uh, and there are a few diverse sides in this championship. There are. Um, Belgium is actually one of the one one of those sides, and there are a few. But I think it is going to become an issue because racism, certainly amongst fans, um, is a, a, is a real difficult issue to deal with, particularly in some of the Eastern European cities. Um, and 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 there are a couple of matches that are going to be played in those areas, in Russia, in um, in in Baku. In, uh, so there, there there are a few Bucharest, uh, Budapest. The 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 matches taking place in those areas, and those. Are stadia where racism incidents have been heard of before so i think it's going to be an issue that is going to come um and make life a little bit difficult for 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 uefa at, at yeah. some stage during this tournament janet that other bugbear the video assisted uh, referee var is another controversial element uh how, what, what are we what's happening in this regard it is being used at um, at Euro 2020, and it's the first time that that VAR is going to be used at a at a European Championship. Um, it's going to bring controversy. It always does. But I must admit, I'm of the opinion that it is probably here to stay, and the players and the referees and everyone else needs to kind of get used to it um, because it's not going anywhere. I think that they are going to going to tweak it, and there might be some changes to it in the future and in the way that it's used. But it's not going away. So get used to it because it's it's going to keep happening and those controversies will always happen but people forget there were controversies with referees that's why VAR came came about in the first place so controversies in soccer it's part yeah. of the game that other conversation in soccer Wembley Stadium has already started doing it uh, gradually allowing in uh, uh, spectators physical spectators into the stadium so what's going to happen in this case there are, as you said, there are eleven different cities that are that are hosting matches across Euro 2020, and the different cities all have a different um, official stadium capacity that they're allowed. There's only one stadium, and that's Budapest, um, that is going to allow 100% uh, capacity. All of the others are somewhere between 25 and 50%. Um, and um, London, the Wembley Stadium, as you mentioned, they're on 25%, so they're they're kind of at the bottom end. Um, that I also think that given the example of previous um, international sporting events, you look at some of the, the rugby tournaments that happen, cricket tournaments that have happened around the world, particularly the IPL, they are probably going to have to face a COVID outbreak at some stage. Um, whether it's amongst teams, squads or amongst fans, it's not clear at this stage. And if it is amongst fans, the problem is that the, the repercussions of that are probably only going to be felt much later. And there's not a lot that they can do about it. But there are rules and regulations in place if there's a COVID outbreak within any squad. Um, games can be delayed and games will be forfeited if um, teams can't actually play a game because they don't have enough players. But if a, if a squad has 13 players who are available to play, then they will play the game, even though they have a squad limit of 26. Let's thank you for setting the scene for us. Janet Witten is SABC's special researcher for sports, arts and culture. Now the representative council of